Weapons don't have instincts. Weapons don't have loyalty. Weapons don't have judgment. Soldiers do. What happens when the soldier becomes the weapon? All right, it's E3. We're here at Activision. I'm here with Dan, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about Call of Duty. So, Call of Duty is usually one of my favorite things here at E3, and it's usually you're showing the next game, but something is a little bit different this year. You're showing off multiplayer, way more focus on that this year. So, why is that? Uh, that we're actually we're super excited because this is the first time in the entire franchise history that we've had multiplayer playable on the show floor. So we've got four stations down there, twelve players each. Um, it's just it's super exciting for us. Uh, we really wanted to bring multiplayer to the show to get the controller in players' hands because you, it's one thing to see videos or to read articles, but you really have to feel the game because we've changed so much about the fundamental movement system and how the game plays, how it feels. You really have to feel it to understand it. Yeah, and on, on surface level, some people might say, oh, it looks like Advanced Warfare, but right. it I've played it and it feels different. Can you explain what, what is that difference? Yeah, so I mean, we, we really evolved um, the Black Ops 2 um, gameplay core combat system, the, the movement set. We really evolved that into Black Ops 3. So that was the first thing that we started was, was we wanted to start taking some of these barriers away from the things that slow players down in a match. So for example, if you come up to a piece of cover, in the past games, you've had to actually look at that cover, you've had to press the button, your gun goes away, you're exposed for a good two seconds in that, uh, in that whole process, and that's just way too long in Call of Duty time. So we wanted to, to really keep players in the fight the entire time, and we had this philosophy, uh, we call it guns up uh, philosophy. So your always, gun's always going to be up through every movement, you're going to stay engaged in the fight at all times. Uh, we also built the movement system around omnidirectional control. So if you are moving to the left and you're in a gunfight with somebody and you hit a piece of cover, you're going to be able to mantle over that piece of cover fluidly, stay in the fight, and, and maintain control the entire time. So it's all about giving players more control, removing those sort of barriers to, that slow down combat, um, give them command over their interaction with the environment, let them use the environment as a tool, um, feel that fluidity chain all of the movements together so you can you can really just kind of move around the map very very fast very fluid and get into position and then engage in your combat in the very classic kind of feel of boots on the ground head-to-head -head engagements yeah momentum seemed to be a huge thing uh, this year how does that influence the way you uh, design the maps so every, you can't really take maps and combat and movement out of the conversation. They all, all of these things interact together. Um, so you have to design the maps from the ground up with your movement system in mind, understanding what kind of combat you want to have, the pace, the flow of the game. Um, so we, we really built the maps for the movement system. The movement system was the first thing that we did on the game. And uh, as, the, uh, as the movement features evolved and the map designs evolved, we started to kind of gain an, an understanding that really the principles that we've built over the past several titles of making multiplayer for Call of Duty uh, still stood, stood in place. So some of the, um, the, the, the core structures of how we build maps, we build around three lanes as a kind of fundamental um, map design philosophy, three lane structure. Uh, we always want to keep the combat in frame, so we're always building um, to maintain those head to head engagements to, to keep um, players at a good distance um, where they can have really uh, satisfying gunfights. Um, so all of the principles that we've learned over the years haven't changed at all. At all. Um, you talk about uh, one of the one of the movement features like wall running. Wall running is not something you do everywhere. It's a, it's a component of the map. There's specific uh, paths designed for wall runs, and those are specific paths that are designed with risk and reward in mind. So if you're going to do it, you're going to expose yourself quite a bit, but it's going to get you from point A to point B faster. So we always build a risk reward um, mentality into everything that we do. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because right when I started playing, I was like I wanted to run everywhere on the walls and jump around, but. You, you could definitely feel that there are some situations where you need to slow down and still hold back. And that also meant that, that you know, at first I felt like, okay, I need to have a submachine gun or a shotgun and run around. But having that position with an AR or sniper is still, like, really viable and important to have on a team. Yeah, it's super crucial. It's actually, uh, you know, we always build uh, to make sure there's something for everybody, for every style of play. And we give players a lot of tools to define how they want to play the game. So we don't want to really force anything too heavy-handed on any, any players and any play style specifically. Um, and 
you know, if you, I think a lot of players when they pick it up the first time, they see the movement system, they're like, oh, I want to try that out. It looks really awesome. And you can slide around corners and and you can do all this stuff. And the first thing they do is they go out there and they, they start moving around really fast and they realize that they're exposing themselves too much. They're going to get shot. So, you know, as you start to learn how the movement system works, you start to learn how the map designs are, are laid out, you start to Put the, you start to fall into a pace and a flow of the game where you, you realize that movement is all about traversing the map and getting into position. And when you engage in, in a gunfight, you really want to use the same classic kind of boots on the ground, um, head-to-head -head engagement mentality. So you want to post up on cover, you want to find a good position, and you want to stay, stay in the fight and very focused and very precision controlled. All right, another thing I thought was super cool is these sort of super moves that you charge up with different hero characters. Can you explain that system? Right, so the special system is also brand new. This is um, probably our biggest core innovation to Black Ops 3. It's something that we're excited about. Um, we're bringing a little narrative and a little fiction um, and personality to multiplayer. So each of the characters has their own voice. They have their own backstory that's sort of uh, built out of the, the world fiction of our game. Um, and each one has their own look. They have their own uh, power weapon and power ability. And so you choose either you want to go with the weapon, which is all about lethality, or you want to go with the ability for each of those characters. Um, and you choose that at the beginning of the match before you start. And then you're locked into that for the entirety of the match. Um, and that's really just to make sure that it, uh, there's a predictability to the game. So if you le if you learn that somebody on the other team is playing as this character with this weapon or this ability, you can start to understand how they're going to behave in that match, and you can start you can kind of shape your team out with a strategy in mind. So um, it's all about just giving bringing some of those big personalities, bringing some fun spikes of power, moments of power through uh, throughout a match um, where you're going to either earn. Uh, your weapon maybe two, three times throughout the course of a match. Uh, you're, you might earn your ability uh, um, four, five, or six times throughout the match because they're much more tactical in nature and, and th uh, they're not about core lethality, they're about really just reinforcing your style of play. Um, so you get these kind of moments of power and it, it just it just feels really good. I mean, it gets it, it kind of you get into the, to the spirit of the character. You start to play the way that the character is designed and that's been something that's been really fun to discover as we've been evolving the game. I also noticed that it was very important, or it could be very like a very bad thing for a team if everyone was running the same sort of uh, one of those, and and how that influenced. I can imagine when we look at pro players as well, like that there's going to be a huge tactical thing in that. Uh, I, I also want to hear is that drawn from single player those characters, or how does that work? So the characters exist um, in the universe of the game. They're not directly derived from the campaign, but they are they are in the world fiction. We've spent, you know countless hours, weeks, months developing the world fiction of the game. Uh, part of the benefits of having a three-year development cycle is we spent a lot more time in the narrative development in the beginning. So there's really a very kind of rich and robust story about the universe that Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is built in. Um, we talk about, you know, we've defined what are the political alliances of the world at the time. We've talked about what's the technology that exists at that time. We've talked about how um, some of the just environmental factors have changed over time, the cl you know, climate change, um, uh, resource scarcity, some of these things, you know, we've spent so much time just building out what this world looks like in 2065. Um, so there's so much um, just fun uh, information to draw from as we design the characters. How was it for you guys now you had this three-year development cycle and the first game on, on next-gen hardware, how, how has that been for you guys? Uh, it's been great. I mean, the, the extra year, um, you know, it was, it was a very necessary step for us to go from last gen to this current gen of uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and, and uh, really pushing the power of the PC platform as well. Um, we needed that time to really overhaul a lot of our core technologies. Um, the entire rendering system, how graphics are rendered in the game, is, is completely brand new. Um, you know, we've, we've switched um, to a... Um, to a you know real-time global illumination system, so everything is physically based. The lighting that you see in the game is is much more photorealistic kind of lighting, and you can do so many more dramatic effects with it. Um, we have volumetric fog. We have um, some technical term order order independent transparency, which means you can just have a lot of particle effects, and it doesn't affect your frame rate, um, and it looks a lot better. Um, so much more we're doing with shadows. Um, so the core graphics tech has just been comp completely overhauled. Um, the extra year also gave us a lot of time to take some big risks. I mean, as you know, that movement system is, is different. It's, it's, it's going to feel familiar to players who are used to Black Ops 2, but it's also very different. And when you change something at that fundamental of a level, you have to have the time to learn and adapt and adjust other systems in the game, other combat systems, how weapons behave, engagement ranges, how your map is structured around that system. So you needed all that time, and that third year really gave us the time 
to learn, uh, to learn lessons, to iterate, to um, start to learn how to build our maps to support that movement style. All right, then let's hear, when are you releasing and what platforms are you on? Uh, so we're going to be releasing, Treyarch is uh, developing the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC platform, and we are wholly dedicated to the next gen and, and really pushing the, the power of the next gen consoles and the technology that goes along with it. All right, really excited to play more. Thanks for your time. Good. Excited for you to play more too.